Hi everybody and welcome back to the next episode of the Knit Knit Chat Knitting Podcast. I am your host Zach as always. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry both as Knit Knack Zach. Um, yeah, um, just right off the bat I'm gonna apologize if there's any noises. There's some construction happening in the a basement unit in my apartment but it's directly below where I live. So in case you hear some banging, that is what that is. Um, yeah, it has been just under a month, I believe. I've been, I didn't look at when I last uploaded, but it's been just under a month. Um, it's fe today's February uh, 12th, 2024. It is Monday. Um, I have a lot to show you guys. I have a lot of new cast-ons that I did since the last episode. A few finished objects. Um, some acquisitions that I got and a ton of stories about some stuff that happened in the last few weeks while we weren't with each other. Um, yeah, so let's just hop right into it. Um, first, let's just start off with my knit fit. Um, and I am wearing my Dotted Rays by Stephen West. I knit this out of a... Um, the um Hugh Loco Sultry fade kit that she had. I bought it um two years ago on her um extra extravaganza sale with a few other kits and some things. So it's like a sultry rainbow fade um that I knit up. Um this is between it's between sizes because I just wanted to use all the yarn that I could. So I'm slightly between the small and the large size that Steven had recommended. Um, as always, I'm in my rocking chair. Um, I didn't get any complaints last time of me rocking too much or anything. So I'm just going to stay in this rocking chair for the time being. Um, yeah, just so I can get the use out of it that I have. Um, yeah, so if there's any issues with any of the sound or any... Um, motion sickness that you guys get, please let me know and I will gladly move to a different location um, to record episodes. Um, yeah, so let's just get right into the finished objects. Um, first things first is actually right behind me. I finished my Knit Words pillow by I Rock Knits. Find off. Look at all those knit words. That's, it was, uh, I just kind of chugged along on this when I needed, when I, like after the, after the last podcast, I just like kind of chugged. I was, I believe I had finished these three colors and then I got here and I tried it on this pillowcase, this pillow form that I got from Ikea. And I was like, okay, I think I just need three more. So then I did three more and parts of me wished I would have um, like swapped where I would have done like the reverse of this here and then, or like have done the same thing here instead of continuing the sequence that I was doing. But I mean, whatever, it's still really pretty. I used a, a bunch of vintage, um, Barocco vintage scraps that I had. And now this just sits on my rocking chair and it's a very nice support. It's very nice. I really like it. Um, yeah, and I still have a whole bunch of <laughs> Barocco scraps to use up in some projects. Um, but it was a really fun project. Um, definitely recommend it um, to use. It's really awesome. Corey from iRock Knits is a Minnesota-based designer. Um, and her Knit Words series has a whole bunch of options if you wanted to do something for those. So check those out if you wanted to knit something. I really love the idea of the pillow. Um, so yeah, I just knit the pillow. And then next, you guys actually didn't see, but that's because I cast it on while I was on my trip. I'm um, actually on my way home from my trip. Um, so I used this yarn. This is um, polka dot sheep. Um, I believe, are they Minnesota based? I don't remember. I don't remember if they're Minnesota based. I think they're at least Midwest based. Um, I bought this yarn forever ago from the Yarnery, which is one of my local yarn stores here in St. Paul. 
Um, this is the Colorway Pumpkin on their Tenderfoot 8020 base. And of course I knit some socks, but I knit the cutest pair of little socks. Um, technically I finished these yesterday, but um, I did, I saved the Kitchener for this morning because I don't want to do them last night. Um, so these are the um, Little Cozy Toes by Judy Catherine, or Kathler. Kathler, I think is how you say it. Um, I have all of the notes and everything in the description, so feel free to look those up and search them on Ravelry. Um, so look at these little toes. It's a little rib sock for baby. So I you knit. So this is the um, I think it's the I think she has a, it's a three week size and like a four month size. I think are the two like sizes that she has, but they're fully ribbed. Um, so they really, they will stretch to baby and you just fold it, fold down the little cuff, cute little sock, got my little fingers in it. Really love it. Super, super fun knit, super easy. Um, I cast on the first one while I was waiting in the airport to head home from New York. Um, and I knit, how far did I knit? I think I knit the entire rib and through the heel flap on the plane and then I picked up and I knit the rest of it like literally that next day. So like this really was like a three or four day project. Um, it went super fast. Fingering weight on US ones. I used my um, Knitter's Pride DPNs because I don't want to finagle with ribbing and everything on um, the on magic loop so I just used I just bought my DPNs because it, it they took up less space in my bag and I have this in a fringe supply fringe supply co bag that is unfortunately out of business um but yeah so I plan also so this these socks are for um my future niece or nephew that my little brother and sister-in-law are having um fairly certain they don't watch this so they won't see it um so I have this pair of socks and then with this leftover yarn, I plan on knitting both my brother and sister-in-law a pair of socks to match. Um, fairly certain I'll have enough. I'll probably for sure use a contrast heel toe cuff for theirs so that theirs matches again. And then maybe I'll make the baby another pair of socks with whatever contrast I have. I have quite a bit of choices for contrast. Um, but I really like this brown. It's fairly neutral and my sister-in-law is fairly neutral when it comes to um, things. So she was very excited when I was like, can you just remind me about what your shoe sizes are? Thank you. And then we saw it. She's like, are you making those socks? I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so I'll get those on the needles soon. I want to finish my pair of socks first before I cast theirs on. Um, the baby isn't due until July, so I still have a bit of time to work on some other baby things, which you'll see. I have a, uh, a little pullover planned to knit for the little baby, and I'm actually working on a blanket for the baby that's a test knit. I need to look at that deadline, and I need to chug along on that blanket. I think I'll do that some today, later after this podcast. So those are my finished objects. Um, yeah, super crazy, super easy, some, some, some fun stuff. Um, I think I lost my one FO a week challenge that I ended up having started for myself in a way because I went on a trip. Um, so, but oh well, I have this finish and I finished that a couple weeks ago. So, and then I cast on like a million things, which is fine. Who doesn't? Okay. So let's get into the works in progress. Okay. Um, so the start of February was, um, started my adventures of moving around and doing a whole bunch of things before my trip. And the first thing that happened was sweater camp, um, with Darn Knit Anyway. Um, and what I do at sweater camp, I volunteer and I help out at the fiber first aid and I help people work on their projects, fix, fix things, help provide solutions for the fit of their garments. Um... And so I just like sit there and I get to enjoy all the speakers and stuff while helping people um, with their knits and stuff, which is always fun. I love that part of that job. Um, but 
but I also obviously get some knitting time done. Um, and I was able to finish the body on my rib lace raglan by James and Watts. And then yesterday I actually cast, I picked up, I, I had the sleeves picked up, um, but then I actually knit the sleeve. What is happening? Okay, never mind. <laughs> I freaked out. Um, but then I actually knit the sleeve yesterday. So I knit, I knit a little, little sleeve. I'm just gonna have these be short sleeves and I'll wear it under like a tank top or something. Um, so I have the second sleeve picked up and ready to just knit away on. I'm a couple rows in to the lace repeat. Um, I did the two stitch I cord around all the edges. So I had picked up the collar already and done that. I think I was like 10, nine or 10 inches into the body and I knit to 12 inches and I put it on some barber cords at camp the first day and I tried it on I was like okay I think I like how this fits and I put it all the way on the barber cord and I fully blocked it actually that next day and then I went back to sweater camp and I put the barber cords back um I put my needles back on and I bound off perfect and then I put it away <laughs> and then I put it away for the rest of camp because I didn't want to pick up the sleeves or anything so there's that. This is a su super fun project so far. Um, fingering weight. This is um, Mondim Sock um, by Rich Osario, um, which is a Portuguese wool. I'm so excited for this to just like be a piece for me in the summer for when I go out with people or um, just when I want to like show a little bit of skin. Um, this is like partially blocked, <laughs> um, but I'm gonna need to re-soak it again after I finish both the sleeves for sure. So there's that. It is very form-fitting and I really like that about it because I think it'll look really good with um, my tank tops and stuff. There's a bit of just like fuzz on it, so I need to figure out that, but fully black, amazing, great accessory piece, great layering piece, I'm very excited. Do, do, do. there's that and then I just have this I have this yarn bowl that I bought last year at sweater camp from Deli Q I had two and I don't know where the second one went but I have these and definitely need need another one I just use this as a yarn bowl really but sometimes I'll put a project in it if it's a small project so there's that um I don't remember exactly how far I was on this ne next project, but it's my pair of socks um, that are in my sock knitting bag. These are the um, Hermione Everyday Socks. Um, Hermione Everyday Socks by Erica Luder, I believe is her name. I am knitting these out of the um, Le Garçon um, Mysterious Mansion, the Butler colorway. I'm knitting these toe up with a modification. Um, I I don't believe I had done the heel the heel flap and stuff. So I've done the heel flap and the gusset and everything, the gusset and the heel flap, heel turn. So now I just need to chug along on um, the legs of this sock. I need to weigh these um, to figure out how much I want to, to leave. I think I'll probably leave maybe a mini's worth maybe like 10 grams of each of these balls, um, maybe, or I'll, I'll, I'll see how much is left because I don't know how much this pattern takes up, but it's just a basic rib pattern and now I have to do it around the entire sock. So it'll go slowly. I didn't want to bring these on my trip because of the cord and having to manage two balls on an airplane, I felt like would have been annoying for the person who was next to me. Um, so there's that super fun pattern. Um, I just need to pick it up again and start knitting on it. And then as soon as I have these off the needles, I'll pick up and start the socks for my brother and sister-in-law. And next is... I don't remember where I was when I showed this yet. I, this may be in the exact same spot when I last showed it. But um, this is the um, basic bulky um, 
you know, basic bulky drop sleeve by James and Watts that I'm test knitting. Um, the test knit, the test knit run is already done, um, but I've already fit, I already finished one sweater, so I'm not too worried about um, finishing this super quick at the moment. Um, I have both of the sleeves like in the middle of being finished, so that's why I'm trying to manage everything. Whoops. So here is here's the sweater. I'm knitting it out of Muse Twenty Three Twenty Rhino. Um, this brown color is um, black walnut, and then this blue is holy schmoly. Um, I kind of stopped knitting on these because I think I'm going to run out of yarn. Um, but I should just continue doing the sleeve decreases um, and just see how far I can get with it. Um, but if I can just get this get the sleeves done, that would be really awesome. So I think I might also try to work on this in the next week to see how far I can get with this. Um, this blue is super dyed, so I, whenever I knit with it, I, my hands turn blue, become a smurf, and it's really funny, but I really love this color, really love the neon with this deep brown, love the accent. I'm not sure either if I want to do a brown cuff or if I want to just do the cuff in the blue, and maybe I could bind off with the brown, that could be kind of cute, a little bind off, a little some bind off action with the brown or something, so, yeah. Here's that. This is knitting up really nicely. You can kind of see in the body of the sweater where I transitioned skeins, but it's not too bad. I just need to finish the sweater and I'm very excited too, so it will happen soon, eventually. It'll probably be done next time, so. And when this pattern is out, I'll for sure let you guys know and make sure that you guys need to get it because it is such a quick knit. Um, the only reason this one has been languishing so long is because I didn't need to knit it so quickly, so I haven't really bothered really finishing it. I have this in a bagu bag, just sit in. I love a bagu, bagu bag, so I'm just like moving my things around now. Okay. And next is the other project that I brought with me um, on my trip. Um, I brought a Muscle Burra by Yazilda Teague, um, and I had a partial ball of um, Spin Cycle dyed in the wool. This is the Mel Melancholia colorway. It's this blue and like purpley fade Spin Cycle. I just had like a like a half a skein. Um, I just had like half a skein left, and I was like, I'm just gonna use this. I have a second one, so. Um, I'm gonna need to wind this up and continue knitting on it. But I literally knit like, so I had started, oh, did I take my pin off? Oh, dang it. I had started it and I think I had gotten maybe about here, here-ish on it. And I knit like all of this in the plane ride to New York. So this was my to New York knitting project and then this, the baby socks for my home knitting project, which I thought was really funny. Um, I had this idea when we were there, like after I, cause I only had like a partial. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna bite off cause then it'll just be done. And I maybe could give it to Joe Locke who me and my friend were going to see in Sweeney Todd. Like if he came out of the stage where I could just like, here's a hat for you I made, you were really great. Um, so like in our hotel room, I like bound it off and then like, the next day I was like, that's silly. I'm not gonna do that. So then I put it back on the needles. Um, <laughs> um, and now I just, I just gotta line up the second skein and finish up the hat. Um, I'm knitting this for the Spinberg make along that Spin Cycle is doing that ends at the end of the month. Um, so hopefully I can just chug along on this. I will probably use this once I have this ball worked up I'll use this as like my break knitting for when I'm at work when I'm on my 30 minute break I can just whip this out and just knit away for 20 minutes and then eat for 10 and then get back to work or something so that's my goal um so I just have that pretty much free because it was in the same bag as my socks but now they're they don't need to be at the moment so there's that 
super fun project. It's a muscle bra. It's super easy. I'm knitting them on a US 3. I believe I'm getting seven stitches per inch, which is the same gauge as um, Kevin from the Needles at the Ready podcast. Oh my goodness. And also a super fun surprise. I, at sweater camp, I didn't really look at who all the speakers were. And then I like saw that they were speaking with us the first day. And it was so lovely to chat with you guys for a little bit. Um, nice to see you as always. Um, and I, and we need to make plans to meet in person, please. Um, but I will talk about that later in the podcast and maybe we can DM and stuff and figure out when a good time is. I have an idea of when a good time is, but I want to make sure that we have things squared away so that I can make sure that I'm going to be there. <laughs> so um, there's that. And then what's next? Oh, so I talked about this last time. This is another French Supply Co. bag. This is their um, waxed canvas that they used to carry, which is probably one of my favorite bags that I have is this wax canvas. Um, so this is my Planet A scarf. Um, I'm knitting the scarf version. This is by Sosu Summers. It is a climate um, awareness sort of like knitting project. So it's knit um, with these little transition sections. And all of the colored sections are the mean average, the average of a a um like a chunk of time like the average temperature of a month in a 20 year span or 30 year span and then the average of the last year um so i'm using 2023's average comparing the average between 1990 to 2020 so i'm using those temperature differences um to gauge the colors of the shawl um so i finished january um, fairly quickly. It's a bri this is a single color brioche section. Um, I am using this, um, it's not technically hand spun, but it's, um, a, in a way it is hand spun because it has a lot of thick and things, thick and thin spots. Um, this is from Get Bent Farms, which is a farm and mill company based in Minnesota. Um, this was dot, this was, um, spun up for Muse 2320 for the, um, Progressive East End Project main color for, um, the, um, that, um, thing that we do here in Minnesota with local yarn stores. Um, so this is that color. It's a very pale, um, tan with a bunch of colored flecks in it, which I think pulls beautifully all of my mohairs that I have from Knitting for Olive. Um, so this first color is what I used in the first section. This is Pink Daisies. And I'm going to use, I'm actually going to be using this one quite a bit because um, this is the, av like the average of plus five degrees um, Fahrenheit. So there's that color. Um, and I didn't, I was going to look at what color was next, but I don't know what color is next. So I also have dark, dark mousse, which is this brown color. I have this yellow, which is quince. I have this green, which I believe is pea shoots. I have this tan color that is rose clay. So you can balance all of this. I have this blue that is poppy blue. And then this is blood orange. So these are all my colors that I'm using in this shawl. I'm going to use all of them at least once. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I just have the average, I have to do the average temperature of, um, February next, um, and that'll be a garter stitch section, and then March will be brioche, and then garter stitch, and brioche, and garter stitch, and just, um, 
flip in between those. Um, I'll be flipping between holding a mo full holding what color mohair um, with the main color. So there's that. Super fun. I love it. I love brioche. And it's just one color brioche, so it goes by super quick. Um, yeah. I'm doing the scarf size. She has a scarf size and a shawl size. And the shawl size, I think, is like almost twice as big. And I was like, I don't want to do a super big thing with this. Just one thing, something that I could knit on in like a weekend. Um, and I knit on this fairly quickly. I knit it, I think I knit it in like two or three days, just based on how quickly I was doing it. So yeah, there's that. Super fun project, just a long jip, a, a longer project that I'm working on um, that I think I might put into the fair for next year. Not this coming year, but the 2025, I might, if this turns out really nicely. So to be thinking about my fair knits, I need to figure out what I'm gonna put in this year. So, <laughs> um, and then next in my, uh, I believe this is, whose bag is this? This is a simpler home bag, a bunch of pies. I love me a pie. Um, I have my boucle cast on. I have the Basic Bed Socks by Emily Bolden. Um, they are just basic DK socks that are knit toe up with a short row heel. Obviously I knit my socks correctly toe up two at a time, so I don't have to worry about finishing a second one. Um, but I have these, this is um, Muse 2320s, um, oh God, um, Muse 2320, wait, um, Timberfoot, Tinder, tin, Tindlewood, which is her DK bou boucle. I had the, I had the thing somewhere. Oh, it's over there, one sec. Yeah. Tinder Doodle. Tim Timber Doodle, which is the, the bird name of her boucle sock base. This is the colorway reading tea leaves. Um, it's a bunch of like browns and tans and everything all mashed up um, like the bottom of a, a loose leaf tea. So reading tea leaves is this colorway. I'm just going to be knitting this fully straight, fully just using up all of this yarn. Um, I am knitting this for the Boucle um, Friends, Boucle Buddies, Boucle Buddies make along um, hosted by Botanical, the Botanical Knitter and Prof Pearl, um, Professor Pearl here on YouTube. I'm gonna put this back in here. I had these cast on. Um, but the cow has already started now, so I just need to work on them occasionally. I think this might be another one of my like work projects that I bring once I finish my Musselberg. Um, but this cow goes, does it go to the end of the month or just go to the end of March? I don't know. Um, so yeah, so that'll go pretty fast. It's D They're DK socks, they will not go too slowly. I just need to sit and work on them as always, as one needs to do to finish an object. They just need to sit and work on it. Um, but we'll see when that gets done. Okay, I have two more, two more whips to show you guys. Hope you guys are still with me. Let me just take a, everybody take a drink of your water. Ah, delicious, delicious water. You guys are gonna be so happy for me. You're gonna be so proud of me. I'm already so proud of me. Um, but I was determined at sweater camp that I was going to pick up one of the sleeves for my um, festive yoke pullover that I cast on in 2022 um, that I knit during Advent. And I did it. I did it and I figured it out um, what I was going to do for my colorwork sleeves. Um, I have this sitting in my Hohe, Hohe and Co. Um, I believe this is a, this isn't a pamper bucket, I don't think. I don't remember now, and I don't think I have the tag. Oh, it is a pampa bucket. Ha ha. Ha ha. Let's go tag. Um, this is a pampa bucket in the color olive. Um, my first ho he object, and I definitely already want more. It smells so good. It smells so good. So I'm just gonna put this down here. 
Um, so I, I cast this on in 2022 and I knit the entire body over Advent, like the Advent when I was like filming Advent. Um, all of my color work, fully color works. Look at that. And the bind off. And at sweater camp on day two, I picked up for my sleeves and I did my sleeves. Well, I did kind of did the sleeve. I still have to do the, the hem, but or the, the cuff, but that'll go fairly quick. So I um, had had these sitting because I didn't want to do color work magic loop. So I needed to wait till I got some like shorter tip um, circulars on a bigger needle size. Um, and I got those needles in May of last year and I just didn't, didn't cast it on because I was like nervous because the pattern is very like figure it out um, on your own sort of thing. So I was like, great, awesome. Love that for me. So I um, just, just was scared and I didn't touch it. So I finally sat down and I figured out, okay, so I just need to have so many stitches in the middle that are blank and then I can do my, I don't have to interrupt my color work panels with decreases. And coincidentally, my color work panels also fully lined up with the original, like on the body. So like my um, snowflakes here all line up, which is kind of, un it was super unintentional by me, but I'm very happy that that happened. Um, and when I bought my short inch, my short circulars, um, I bought them from the knitting truck at um, Shepherd's Harvest, which is a um, knitting festival in um, Minnesota here. Um, and she was, she said that I need to, I should um, go up another needle size from what I did the original color work on, just so that they're not too tight. And yes, in a way, this is a bit bigger than the original. Like you can see that these are different sizes. But I still think it will block fine and it'll look good. I don't really care that much. So I just want to have this done. Um, so I need to finish the cuff on this and need to just chug along on this color work. Because having it on short, on like a shorter circular, I did like, I did seven. I Because you have 76 stitches when you pick up and knit. So I did seven. And then when I ended up getting to do it when I ended up finishing my three sets of decreases that I had to do. I cut a full pan, full repeat from the beginning and the front. So then I only had five color work panels, color work repeats on the sleeve um, to do, which made it go by super quick um, while I did more rapid decreases after that. So I have all my decreases marked on here, so I hopefully should be able to fully replicate them on the other side. Um, but yeah, so there's that. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I got a lot of compliments on it while I was knitting. A lot of people were impressed that I was knitting color work um, at sweater camp. Um, so yeah, I am knitting this with um, Juniper Moon Fibers Patagonia, which is a sport weight um, wool, non-superwash from Juniper Moon Fibers. I don't remember what colors these are. Um, so yeah, those are the colors that I'm using, just a white and a red. Super basic Christmas sweater. Um, but I'm very excited to have this sweater done finally. Um, and I will have it done for Christmas. I think I'll have it, try to have it done. Um, it'd be nice to have it done before it gets super warm out because then I can just wash it and leave it outside to block. And then um, come Christmas, I can just wear the heck out of it. It'd be super, super cozy, super cozy. So there's that. Again, I just need to knit on the cuff and then, and then I can 
think about think about the, doing the sleeves at another time. Maybe the next time I have a decent break from work and stuff, I can just sit and um, work on the sleeve. So there's that. I'm really happy with this. I'm really loving my knits right now. I just like see them. I get so much joy and like anticipation of like, oh, I need to sit and work on that. Um, but then there's also so many things where I'm like, I need to do this and this and this and this and this. So many things. Okay. And my last work in progress that I have right now is a, another test knit that I'm doing. Um, I wasn't sure I was going to sign up for this test knit. I hadn't knit any of this designer's patterns or anything, but um, I really wanted a cardigan. And I was like, this is perfect. Um, and I felt like it was very unisex and everything. So I was like, let me just submit um, an application. So I'm just gonna show you the yarn that I'm using. So I had bought this yarn from the Yarnery. They had um, they had this yarn on sale. Um, and I was like, this is a gorgeous yarn. Uh, I need it in my life. And then this test knit came out and I was like, I need to knit it in this color because this is my color. Um, so this is Shelter um, by Brooklyn Tweed obviously. And this is the Fireball colorway. This is from their, that's not their tones line. It's their, um, like solids line. So there's no real like high variegation. I feel like with a lot of sheltered colors, um, there can be high variance in colorways, but so far I haven't needed to, um, like, um, do like any skein fading um, when I'm transitioning, they're all very consistent with each other. So I bought eight skeins of these. I'm very excited. And I am just over halfway through the body of this cardigan. This is, I am knitting, I'm testing the Journey cardigan by um Nitarella, also known as Jen Jill Zelinsky, um, who is the owner of North Bay Fibers. Um, so this is the cardigan version of her journey pullover or journey sweater. I can't remember what one it's called. Um, yeah, so it's just a basic raglan construction. Um, there was a um, miss, there was a missed thing in the, um, it's fixed now, it's fixed now, so I don't need to talk about it. Um, so this is a, just a basic, this can be a fairly oversized cardigan for me. Um, I believe I'm, knit, I'm knitting the third or fourth size, and I think I'm going to get like a 40 inch finished circumference, which I think is going to be perfect to just throw on and run out of the house. Um, I need to figure out what side I need to do my button band on to be sure. Um, and then I'm going to do a taper, the tapered sleeve option that she has in the pattern. Um, and then it's just a, a you know, a, a pickup for the ribbed, ribbed um, placket. I need to have the body and the placket done by March 6th, so like in a couple weeks. Um, so I'm going to try to chug along on this body. This marker here that I have on it right now is the marker for the six inch, six inches from the underarm. So I have another like inch and a half that I knit on it yesterday while I was watching the Super Bowl. So um, I'm really loving how this is going. I'm loving this color. This color is amazing. I love this orange. Um, I'm loving the fit of it already and it's not even blocked or anything and I just can't wait to wash this shelter and just have it bloom and take shape. Um, yeah, I'm doing the, I'm doing a, a spit splice to splice all my skeins together and you can really not tell that where I've like joined and stuff. So that's awesome. Um, I feel like maybe I'll have to go back to the art. Hopefully they have the other two skeins that I left there still. Um, I think I might have to go back and 
grab the other two, but I don't know. I don't know how long, how much the sleeves are gonna take um, or the placket. I feel like the placket will take maybe half a skein to do because it's a full, full up and around. I didn't do any of the neck ribbing, so I have to pick up all the way around the right panel and or the right panel, the neck, and the back panel all the way down and then rib and then rib for a couple and do buttonholes. I need to find buttons for this. I need to figure out, I'm thinking I want to do like brown buttons, like dark, like a dark ochre, ochre, not an ochre, not an ochre, a dark, a dark oak button or something. Um, let me know what you guys think um, for buttons I should do. I really do think like a dark brown, I could maybe even see a light brown. I just need to go and find go to a shop and look at buttons and bring, I need to bring this with to look at buttons. So let's find, let's figure out where, what we need to do with that. Um, there's that. Again, obsessed. Obsessed with all my knits right now, um, as one should be, but you know, there are sometimes, I have projects that I like need to start, but like, I don't really want to know. I have like some yarn and a book of dishcloths that I just like want to like knit through, but that's just not stuff that I want to really knit on. So I have that potentially to use someday. Like when I'm really bored or something, I might decide to pick up. I've occasionally thought of like, oh, I should just pick up and knit a dishcloth real quick, but it's a fingering weight dishcloth. And I'm like, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, plus I have a whole bunch of other sweater quantities and stuff that we'll talk about in the next section. Um, but first, um, let's talk about my acquisitions. Um, so like I said, I went to sweater camp and of course at sweater camp, um, darn it anyway, has like half of their store of yarn and stuff at sweater camp, um, for people to look at and buy stuff for sweaters or for socks or for blah, 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 whatever. So this year they had, um, I can't remember her name the woman who wrote the book about self-striping yarn for garments. Her. Can't remember her name. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. Um, so they had her speak and they reached out to some self-striped dyers and got some self-striping yarn um, at their shop. So one of the dyers that they had is UK-based. I, bl I believe this person is UK-based. Um, Fab Funky Fibers, um, Fab Funky Fibers, I believe is UK based, um, and they do a lot of, oh yeah, dyed in the United Kingdom, there we go. They do a lot of, um, rainbow stuff, or all of the self-striping stuff that they had were all, like, rainbow based, which was amazing. Their table had a sock tube of all of the skeins, um, fully like wound into a sock tube, which I thought was like the best way to display how these yarns will stripe. Um, so I ended up buying two sets. So they came in two 50 gram skeins, um, wound up separately. Um, and I bought two, so I bought this one. This is the Never Ending Rainbow. So from what I believe how it was laid out, this one kind of just like fully fades through the rainbow. Um, I'm very excited to knit this into a pair of socks. I'm knitting these into socks. I don't, I don't really want to do anything else other than socks with self-stripings, but there's that. I'm very excited to knit this. Um, I also love that um, the staples match the stitch marker that's on it, which I think is really cool. <laughs> Just a small little detail. Um, this is a 75, 25, um, 100 grams, um, 250 grams, obviously, but 100 grams total with um, 464 yards. So this will make pl plenty, plenty for me for a pair of socks. And I'm very excited. Um, and then they surprised Darnit, actually, with a sweater camp colorway, um, which I think was super awesome. So it's the same yarn base. Um, yeah, the same yarn base and everything, um, but it's basically a rainbow with some chunks of teal in between every stripe. Um, so I bought this and I am 
keeping one of the 50 grams gains and I am giving the other to my friend Hannah. Hi Hannah. Um, so I'm giving one of these to Hannah. I need to find time to run it over to her place um, and give her her skein. Um, so yeah, that's this. I'm excited for this one too. Um, again, I love socks. I don't knit socks super fast because I feel like I'm more of a garment garment knitter and not like an accessory knitter. Um, and I don't knit socks super fast. So, oh well. I will knit them eventually. I, yeah. So, those are those. Um, super awesome. I also love how these look together. I love a rainbow. Can you tell? <laughs> okay, so those are those that I got. I'm just gonna put these over here. Oops. Um, and then next, I got back from my trip to New York and I opened my mailbox and it was full. And I had forgotten a while ago, I had gotten a confirmation email about a delivery happening. And I totally forgot that at the end of 2023, I signed myself up for the Mysterious Cabin um, <laughs> set by um, Les Garçons. Um, so I got my first month uh, I got February or March it, oh my god, January's um, in the mail when I got home and oh my god, it's so cute. So I'm going to show the pin and the sticker first before I show the yarn. Um, look at the little kitty, look at him, he's so cute, there's a little socks on. Ah, oh, adorable, ah, adorable, can't, can't even. Okay, now I'm going to show the yarn. And a little stitch marker. Um, I kind of hope that you have gotten yours if you um, got this. Um, this is on their BFL sock, which is an 80-20 BFL nylon. Oh my god. So cute. This brown and this pink, I just, I can't, I'm so excited to knit socks out of this. I just need to just I'm so excited for this sock club um this brown obviously is mysterious cat and the mini is Kirby's pink so there's that I'm very excited for these socks and the little sock stitch marker maybe with this too glary too much glare too much glare from the sun so those are those Perfect. Um, and then obviously, last things for acquisition that I'm going to show. Obviously, I was in New York. Obviously, I had to go to yarn stores. Obviously, I had to buy yarn. And obviously, they are hand dyers um, that are based in New York, which is all of the check marks, check, check boxes that I needed to do. First, I am going to show you some really awesome things. Um, I was luckily, lucky enough um, me and my friend went to see Sweeney Todd for sure, um, but then we decided that we wanted to see a second show. Um, so we, um, on Tuesday, we saw Hades Town on Broadway um, with um, Jordan Fisher as playing Orpheus. Oh, amazing. Such an amazing show. So touching, so lovely. I love the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. I've seen multiple variations of it, so I was very intrigued with how they were going to do it. I love the music from this musical, and it was amazing. So good. I ended up getting some signatures. Um, I didn't stay after um, to get signatures after we sat on Tuesday. I actually met up with a friend um, Tuesday night after that show, um, but we ended up going back Wednesday after um, we saw, so, and then the next day on Wednesday, we went and we saw Hades Town, or, oh my gosh, Sweeney Todd, um, which is the show that we went to see because Joe Locke is, was starring as Tobias, so we really wanted to see him and hear him sing live, and it was amazing. I love that show. Again, 
super theater kid over here, um, loved the show, loved Sondheim. Um, so we saw the matinee performance, um, and we saw, um, Nicholas Christopher and Delaney, what was her name? Delaney DeWalls. Where is it? Um, no, sorry, no, Delaney Westfall as, um, Mrs. Lovett, and she was amazing. Delaney was amazing. She was so good. Um, so good. So we stayed after, um, on the mat, on the matinee performance. It was a two-show day, so they had a matinee and they had a seven o'clock. So we stayed at the stage door for a bit, and we got a few signatures, um, from some Sweeney people who came out. Joe Lack didn't, unfortunately, come out at the matinee performance, but then our hotel was literally right down the street from the hotel. So we were like, we'll be fine. We'll go eat dinner. We'll go walk around and we'll come back after the night performance. And that ended at like 1030 or so, or like 930 or so. Um, so we got back to the stage door after the second performance and we got a couple more signatures and we saw Joe Locke. He came out of the stage door with two people in his toe. We have no idea who they were. My friend thought it was Olivia Rodrigo and somebody else, but we don't know. But he did not stop and sign, which was kind of heartbreaking, um, but I totally get it. He just, There was a car out waiting for him and he just booked it in the car and left. But like, I totally respect that. It was phenomenal to be able to see him in person and like within like feet, like probably like, three or four yards away from me was Joe Locke. And it was so crazy. Um, but then we ended up going back to our hotel, getting our Hades Town playbills and going back to the Hades Town show, which was just a couple blocks away from a hotel. And we, I got these signatures um, from Hades Town. And as we walked back, um, we walked back around, we walked through Times Square back down past the Sweeney Todd um, theater, um, past the Lund Fountain theater. And um, we were like, there are people still waiting. Um, we were like, well, I guess if I really wanted to, if I really wanted an autograph from somebody in this cast, I want it to be Sweeney Todd. I want Nicholas Christopher to sign my playbill. And of course he walks out right away. And we both just have our Hades Town playbills. And so I'm like, I'm gonna run to the hotel room and grab our playbills for Sweeney Todd. And we're gonna, so I run to the hotel room, come back, wait in line, got to talk with him. I took a picture with him. It was super awesome. He was super, super kind. I feel like all actors are really kind um, and just really supportive and really love that their fans enjoy their performance and because they worked so hard. So it was crazy. Um, so yeah, I got that. I got these two signed Broadway playbills, which I think are my favorite acquisitions. Um, and I'm very excited to go back to New York, um, maybe see a couple more shows. Um, so yeah, there's that. That's that's my 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 personal non yarny acquisition. Sorry for that blabber on about that. Um, but I am going to show. This yarn first. So this, I didn't buy this yarn bag in New York. I brought it with me to put my yarn acquisitions in. This was a cow bag that I bought at Darnet anyway. And the first yarn store that we stopped at was in on the Upper East Side of New York. Um, Upper East Side, just east of um, Central Park. And it was called Annie and Company, Annie and Company's Neat, knitting and needle craft. So it was this really cute um, yarn store that also had a bunch of, I believe they were cross stitch patterns um, in the store that were all like Broadway themed and like just like some generic like really cool um, cross stitch stuff. So a lot of needle craft on one half and the other half had yarn. So I was looking at all of the yarn that they had and I kind of really fell in love with the idea of um, yarn pooling. Um, somebody had talked about it at sweater camp and I was like, that sounds like a really fun thing to do. So I was looking specifically for yarn to do some, um, 
um, what's it called? Um, not yarn pooling, but like, you know what, or assigned pooling. That's what it's called, assigned pooling. Um, so I found this yarn. This is um, Yarn Over New York. Um, again, it's dyed in New York. Um, this is the, oh, I just realized that these are different colorways. No, they're not. Nope, nope, they're not. I was just reading the yarn base. So this is um, uh, uh, Yarn Over New York, which is dyed in New York, which is amazing. This is a colorway Comet Tail, and it is the it is the Tribeca base, which is a sparkle DK. I don't know if you can see the sparkle a lot. You probably can see it better in like the black. So it says Sparkle DK um, 7525 Merino, Nylon, and Stellina base, 231 yards per 100 grams. So I'm thinking about doing a um, pooling, like a sort of like a pooling, as a yarn over sort of thing whenever I get to like these color sections in this, do a black shawl with colored little eyelets stuff in it. So it's my plan for this. I really fell in love with it. And again, I see myself going to New York. So I do see myself getting a bunch of New York yarn very soon. Um, people at Annie and Company were super nice. Um, it was a super cute shop and yeah, I really liked it. Um, and then we ventured over across Central Park to the west side, um, the upper west side. And we found Nivy City, um, which is such a cute little yarn store. It gives gave me similar vibes to Muse. It was a bit wider. It's probably twice as wide as Muse down in Hastings. Um, but they had a bunch of um, indie dyed stuff. And the one lady that worked there, I was wearing my um, Cozy Classic Raglan in the... Um, um, kitchen sink colorway that I dyed up. Um, she was like, oh, do you make your sweater? And I was like, yes, I did. And she was the first person all day to compliment my sweater, which made me happy. Um, but I got this little pin from them because I love a pin. And they gave me a punch card. And my friend was like, why are you getting a punch card? I'm like, you don't know when I'll be back in New York. I don't know either. I'll get a punch card because why not? I love a punch card. Um, perfect. So there's that. And then I ended up grabbing this skein, this sock yarn, 80-20, two-ply by Hugh Maid, which again, dyed in New York. Um, and this is the Starry Night colorway. And it's, it's so pretty. All the yellow, slightly yellow speckles and like the fades. I'm so excited. To knit this. I think I'm gonna knit it into a pair of socks. I think that's probably what I should do with this is knit it into socks or it would be really pretty as like a shawlette um for somebody but I do I do think they need to be a pair of socks. So I love the way that this logo I love this logo it's so cute. Um there are there were a couple other um yarn dyers based in New York that I kind of mm, surpassed over murky depths was one of them who I really almost bought um because Michael from Peace for Peace Crafting um has knit with a lot of their stuff um so that's definitely on my list of something to buy next time um but I didn't want to buy too much so I thought that buying three skeins would be great um so yeah so those are really all of my acquisitions that I um that I got. Nitty City, super cute, super cute shop, super lovely um, workers, and it was amazing. It was an amazing trip. I can't wait to go back. And when I want to go back next is for Rhinebeck. Um, I was, I googled the um, next dates for Rhinebeck, and I believe, hopefully Google is right, and they are October 18th through the 21st or something like or like the 19th or the 21st or something or this yeah so 
that time period. So it's mid-October um, and I was looking at my marching band schedule and that is the week after we have finished our season. So it's the week after we finished um, finals. So hopefully um, the banquet date hadn't been, hasn't been picked or solidified yet. So I can guarantee, hopefully guarantee to go back to New York in October for Rhinebeck. Um, Michael from Peace for Peace, Needles at the Ready guys, um, Kevin Ray, um, let me know if there are any details that I need to, um, that I should try to keep in mind for now. Um, if I could take along with you guys, that would be really awesome. Um, crash in a Airbnb with you guys. Hit me up. You know where I am. I'm always on Instagram. Please DM me. Um, love to meet and hang out with you guys, especially if it's at Rhinebeck. Um, so there's that. Um, then a few other things that I want to share with you guys. Um, I just watched Michael's podcast while I was getting ready, while I was sorting through my things today, and he was talking about how he has sweater quantities that are kind of assigned to things and that aren't assigned to things. So I want to show the two sweater quantities that I am picking, trying to decide what I want to knit with at the moment. So in this bag, this cornflower bag that I bought. I have um, neon yellow. Ooh. This is Muse 2320 um, highlighter. So I have this neon yellow. I have, I can, I can get another skein of this if I need it. Um, but I, I'm trying to decide if I want to knit another cozy classic raglan out of this yarn or if I want to knit a Daily Ritual Pullover by um, Park Williams, or do I want to knit a um... Oh my gosh, what's it called? What is it called? Um... I don't remember, what's it called now? Oh, or I could knit the Lakes Pullover, um, which is a pullover construction that I haven't really done before. Um, again, it's a basic, it's a fairly basic fit pattern, but I really love the Cozy Classic Raglan. So I'm thinking about doing that with this color. That's what I'm leaning towards, knitting a fourth one in a neon. Um, and I would totally be down to knitting it into like a short sleeve version that could be fun um or maybe I was even thinking of doing the very v the very v-neck raglan by Jessie May um so I have a v-neck option and a in a, in that so I'm still I'm still bouncing between ideas please let me know in the comments below what you guys think I should do with this um so there's that and then I had bought this yarn. I talked about this last time, my Winsledale Worsted that I have. Um, I talked about knitting the um, Otoño sweater that's in the Lina book, um, which just means autumn. So it's like a leave colorwork sweater. Um, I also thought I could maybe knit a yesteryears out of this. That would be really pretty. I'm kind of think I want to lean towards the yesteryears with this. Um, yeah, that's my idea, is knitting the yesteryears. But um, those are my two options for like a colorwork sweater. Um, and I just have this sitting, this yarn sitting in my Harry and Alice bag, even though I bought this yarn at Darn It anyway. <laughs> um, but I also do have um, I was given a gift card by Amy, Amy P of, um, Darn It Anyway for volunteering my time. I was given a gift card, um, that I'm going to use to get some fingering weight yarn to knit another, um, So Basic sweater. And I want to knit a full length sweater this time, um, because I have that t-shirt version, but I want to knit a full length one fingering weight. So I'm trying to figure out what 
color I want to do that one in. Um, so I need to pull all my sweaters out and look at, see, do I want another blue or gray sweater? Or do I want to venture into something different? I have this yellow sweater that I'm waiting on my needles, waiting to go on needles. I have this green and gray sweater that's waiting to go on my needles. I have a brown sweater and brown and blue sweater that's on my needles. I have an orange sweater that's on my needles. Like I need to figure out what color I should do because um, I don't want to always be knitting with the same color. I think that can sometimes get a little boring and I need some variety in my palette. I feel like I'm a very colorful person sometimes. Um, so yeah, that will really conclude everything um, that has to do with this podcast. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Um, I'm sorry for keeping you just over an hour. Um, it was a blast as always chatting with you. Please let me know in the comments below what you are knitting on, what some fun stuff that happened to you um, while we were away. Um, did you go on any trips? Do you have any trips planned? Um, I hope your February goes well and I'm, I will see you all in March. Bye guys.